I give you the floor, sir, and what we saw on Saturday night. What did we see? Yeah, it was pretty, it was an extraordinary performance by uh, Tyson Fury. It, it, and the reason it was extraordinary is the way he went about it. You know, in the first fight, which I was privileged to announce, uh, the first pay-per-view where they fought, um, Ty, uh, Tyson Fury did what he does. He's an exceptional boxer, good defensive fighter, um, has a long jab, and he boxed against the slugger, Deontay Wilder, survived two knockdowns, one astonishingly, the second knockdown he got up from is the most amazing thing I've seen in 40 years of announcing boxing. And yet for this fight, he pressed forward from the moment the fight started. He told us he was going to do that in advance. I certainly didn't think, I thought that was just him using gamesmanship. He pressed forward used his jab to walk his way in, to walk down Deontay Wilder and and bully him, which was that, what, to me, was the extraordinary part. And, I mean, <laughs> he also had, I mean, we're seeing him singing and dancing and just like like he was uh, getting ready for a stroll through the park, not a not a prize fight in front of the entire universe, Al. I mean, that was amazing to, to witness that. He, he's a fascinating guy. I did, I, for... Uh, about five years I did boxing for Channel 5, which is an over-the-air network in uh, the U.K., and I did a number of Tyson Fury fights as he was coming up. And you get to know somebody at that level a little better because there's not all the trappings around them and you're, you can have unfettered, uh, you know, uh, uh, being available to be with him. And so as a result, I, I got to know him a little bit. And he's an extraordinary individual. He he has a huge belief. He is he has a very quirky view of life. I think we can all say that. And so when you look, it, it, if I was going to make an analogy, remember how relaxed and easygoing Evander Holyfield was before. I think it was before the the, the Tyson fight. We saw him singing on his way in. And, I mean, in a way, it was like that. Well, I, and you're the perfect person to ask this question since you've seen all these fights and you are in the International Boxing Hall of Fame for that. Have you ever seen anybody lick the blood off the nape of the neck of uh, an individual whose ear he might have punctured that with a hit? That was an absolute first, yes. Um, <laughs> that was, I, did I say quirky? I believe. Uh, yeah. Perhaps well, I, I mean, understated. Yeah. Quirky, I believe, is an understatement of that. Uh, I don't even know how to describe the idea of him doing that. Uh, but that is, uh, it was strange. Well, th that's the thing about boxing, especially heavyweight boxing, whether it's somebody coming in on a, a jet pack and crashing next to the ring or any number of other bizarre things that have happened. The one thing you can count on is that it, with heavyweight championship prize fighting, something strange is going to happen. Oh, oh, remember that time somebody bit off somebody's ear? Yeah, I forgot about that. <laughs> Yeah, I know. I mean, uh, Holderfield's the one who had his ear bitten, and Tyson's the one who did that. And yeah. now we've got a Tyson uh, in a first name just uh, licking the the nape of the neck of of his opponent. Um, so, how does one beat Fury, Al? How does one? Uh, we we did see Wilder come close. Uh, just got to yeah. get that one punch in. Is that the way it works here? Yeah, I mean, I did, look, Tyson Fury has been down several times in his career. Uh, about five, I think. Uh, and and uh, you can put him down. The problem is keeping him down. That is tricky. Uh, he, you know, um, but and remember, he was close. To, he was close to losing against Otto Valin in the previous fight to this when he got cut badly. Now that can happen to any fighter, obviously. So there, he's not unbeatable, obviously. But he's very. He's a very difficult man to fight because he's got his length. He jabs well. And uh, he's got a good chin, and he's got good defensive skills. So he's very he's a very awkward fighter, uh, and all of that makes him tough to, to fight. Now, Deontay Wilder, of course, wanted to get the big right hand in. He landed several right hands early in the fight, but then really stopped throwing that punch for a variety of reasons, you know. Uh, but you, you need to beat Tyson Fury, you're going to need to hit him with something um, – something special. Al Bernstein. And part of the problem is, too, yep. because he's 6'9", because of his long reach, and because of the way he fights, doing that isn't always so easy. Al Bernstein here on the Rich Eisen Show. Is there a comparison for Tyson Fury? 
You got a good comp? I don't know. You know, one of the things that has kind of annoyed me, both on Twitter and everywhere else, is that people have been obsessed with this idea of comparing these heavyweights to others and uh, trying to figure out where they place in history. Uh, you know, this isn't a this isn't one of those golden era. It's a good era for heavyweights now because people are fighting each other and it's exciting and it's creating a lot of interest in a sport that is having a renaissance to a, to a degree because of uh, a lot of different things. So that's good. It's all good. Uh, I don't know what he, – he, look, he's a, he's a handful – for any heavyweight of the past because of his height and his size and the way he fights. Where he fits in historically and who you could compare him to, I don't know if there's an apt comparison because there haven't been that many heavyweight champions that are six foot nine who, who fight like he fights. Lennox Lewis ushered in the era of the big, tall heavyweight. He's spectacular. I think Lennox Lewis is one of the great heavyweights of all time. Um, but he's not. He doesn't fight exactly like Lennox Lewis. Um, so, so your yeah, Tyson Fury is unique. For more of the Rich Eisen Show, tune to Audience Channel 239 on Directv for free on BR Live, or download the Rich Eisen Show app.